Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to construct a set of steps like this. It's a pretty easy project but it can be intimidating especially when you're cutting your own stringers. So I'll walk you through each of the processes but, but to start off with a good foundation literally it's nice to have a landing pad or at least knowing how this how you're going to set your steps in the ground. That way you can get a good measurement and understand your rise needed from the ground surface to the deck to make sure you cut each step accordingly. This is part of a much bigger project. And if you want to see the full playlist of this deck and how we're breathing new life back into it, go ahead and click right here and you'll see all those different videos in the breakdown. If not, if you want to jump into the steps, let's look at the dimensions that we're dealing with for this application. Okay two critical dimensions when making the stairs, and that is the rise. What is the distance you need to go from your surface, your landing pad, to the top of the deck boards, and then also your run. So how, how far of a distance between the rim joist or the deck itself out to your last stair. To get this, you can take a level from your surface Make sure the bubble's in the middle, extending out the deck surface, and then take your measurement. And here we have 28 and a quarter as our rise. Now for run, you have to know the deck, the deck tread plates and how thick you want to go. Here we're using two standard deck boards, which are both five and a half inches thick. So we want a one inch overhang, making each of the stairs width or run 10 inches. So with one, two, three stairs, we're gonna have 30 inches of run. Now in our area, and you should check your code because it does change a little bit area to area, you can't have more than seven and three quarters of an inch for any one of these steps. And then also each step has to be within three eighths of an inch. So you can't have an eight inch step and a seven and a half inch step because you'd be beyond uh, that tolerance. So each of these is going to be 7 and 1 16th of an inch for each step runs. Now I'm going to take those two measurements and then that's how I'm going to cut these stringers out of a 2 by 12. But before jumping into that, I want to jump down and show you how we extended the rim joist to make sure the hangers had something to secure into. So let's check that out. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys on the back side. In every instance, is going to be a little different. So I crawled down here. This should show you how I extended out the rim joist so I can hang the stairs from this extension here. What I did is I put some blocking in place. These are actually two by 12s. That's why they're longer than the, the uh, two by 10s. And so I put that blocking in place, two of those, and then I butted up the four by four post to that sinking um, six inch structural screw. So this monster, through the outside rim joist, because it's two, it's actually a double rim joist, so three inches into the four by four post, which is actually three and a half inches. So I'm going through the double rim joist and then three inches into the three and a half inches of the four by four post there. So that's what I did for that one. And then uh, coming this way, which you can, you can see in the four by four post, I attached it to these, the blocking here with a four and a half inch. So that's one inch into the one and a half inches of depth in that block. And that's how it's secured uh, to the blocking. So this just gives you an idea. At pretty much every instance is gonna be a little bit different. So you're gonna to have to assess your situation, but at least you guys will see how I handled this. So now we're ready to start marking off and cutting our stringers. I just wanna run through what I have here and you'll need to do the same project. I'm using a two by 12 pressure treated uh, board and then a standard framing square. And the key here is to get these small gauges, which will help you mark exactly your run and your rise. Lock those in place. So I have those locked at 10 inches for my run and seven and 1 16th of an inch for my rise. Then when you go along, all you're gonna do is mark up and put those gauges on the edge 
of the board and then do your marks and then keep progressing down for each of your steps. And I'll show you that in a minute. What I use to cut them off mainly is just a standard skill saw. I'm using the 24 tooth um, blade and for us DIY wires, usually it's like one blade, we're gonna cut everything, but it is nice to have like a 60 tooth plywood blade uh, that's going to make for a nicer cut, less splinters, but it's not gonna eat as much material. If you see here, you get some burn marks uh, when you're doing your cuts, your blade is probably worn out. And that's, if you're only using this a couple times a year, that's a definite possibility. So worth going to get a nice sharp blade and make the job easier. Blades are usually only uh, eight to 10 bucks, depending on where you get them. So I'll do most of the cuts with the skill saw, but then I'll do the finish cut with a jigsaw. So the circular saw obviously cuts at an arc, right? Because it's circular. So you cannot cut right up to the corner of your stair. So you're gonna cut up to the top corner and then there's gonna be material on the bottom side and the jigsaw is what you're gonna use to complete that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one here and then show you guys kind of the process of marking out and cutting it. So I'm offsetting a little bit here because of that crack in the two by 12. We're just taking that framing square with the gauge is set to your rise and run. You're just gonna trace the outside for as many steps as you need. Now that top line, I'm just going to extend down because that is actually going to be the back surface. Now for the start of the stair, you have to get the bottom surface correct. And instead of seven and one sixteenths in this, this instance, I'm using five and 13 sixteenths because I'm going to add one and a quarter of inches of tread on top of that. And that's gonna give me my total height. So that's the markings I've made and just confirming. So now, before we cut the rest of them, what I would do is take your stringer out and just line it up, roughly setting it in place. And then you just, you want to check your measurements. So it is nice to have a little bit of your tread with you. So whatever is going to be serving as that, just making sure everything is lining up to your rise that you want it. Uh, probably mostly on the top surface and the bottom because these guys should be cut to the height that you desire for the rise. So now you just match everything up. And then if everything looks good, now the nice thing is you have a template to go knock out the rest of your stringers. The stringers will be attached to the concrete landing pad with a two pressure treated 2x4 as a base plate. To make sure this all fits, I need to notch out the middle two stringers to make sure they can receive that base plate without any issues. I've assembled the stringers together with the base plate and one of the tread boards. This is so I'll know where to mark each of the stringers so I can install the hangers prior to getting everything finally secured.
So now using a hammer drill and also a half inch bit, you can look down in the description, I'll have a link to exactly the bit I was using. I'm going to make two holes here on the base plate and that is to fit some anchors which will be holding everything to secure to the landing pad. Another project in the books and the progress on the deck continues. Next up, we're gonna do some seating and some planter boxes and start to pull everything together. If you guys have any questions, jump down in the comments. I'm in there on a daily basis and happy to help any way I can. Also in the description, you'll find all the links of the tools and parts we use for this project. If this one helped you out, don't forget to give us a like. We always appreciate that. And subscribe to our channel as we have new videos like this coming out on a weekly basis to help you guys around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.